Mark Mitchell, right before we got on the air, enters the transfer portal. Brendan Marks is our guy. And he said yesterday, John Shire probably had to prepare for some difficult conversations to be had. I'm interested if this news is the result of one of those difficult conversations or him looking at Malawak and Cooper Flagg, both front court players coming in next year who are projected top five draft picks and realizing that it's going to be pretty congested there and already being resigned to the fact that one way or another, whether it's the NBA or the transfer portal, this was going to be it for him at Duke. Yeah, I think it's a bit of both of those. Um, I really think some of the difficult conversations probably started back in December and January. Um, if you remember all the way back, Mark Mitchell played in 68 games at Duke. He started 67 of them. The one game he didn't start was their loss at Georgia Tech, and he was benched with the broadcast team saying going into that game, John Shire was trying to send a message to him to be tougher. And he has 10 points and has the dunk that puts Duke up four in that game. But after the dunk that puts Duke up four, gets called for attack. Georgia Tech has a four-point possession. Duke never led for the rest of the game and loses, and yada, yada, yada. Um, it was a weird year for him. And I say that, look, he played out of position. Like, he was a three last year. He was a four this year. Uh, it, it's part of the bigger conversation of this team did not bring in a transfer big. So Kyle Filipowski had to play out of position. Mark Mitchell had to play out of position. They played a three guard lineup for the most, for most of the season, if not all of it, really. Um, and you, you're, you're looking at this and it's just kind of the way college basketball has moved so fast in the last four to five years where you're looking at these guys and it's like, well, He's a really talented player. He was really productive. Like I've got the Mark Mitchell double digit tracker is is now retired at 33 and four. Uh when he reaches double digit. When he scored 10 or more. And it was 14 and one when he scored at least 15. Um, 19 and 12 when he played and scored in single fidget. Like that's the side of the fact that people don't realize, I don't think, because I it's not the one that I tout so much, but they're kind of a above average team when he scored in single figures and when he was ineffective. And, uh, but, but where we are in college basketball is just, you looking at a guy like that. You're looking at what Duke is bringing in. You're looking at the way Duke wants to play based on what you think of the personnel they have coming in. Like Isaiah Evans, Cooper flag, con Newpole, Darren Harris, they're all shooters, right? Like Cooper flag might be the worst shooter of anybody coming in next year. Uh, other than the two big men with Malawak and Patrick Gongba. So, you know, Mark Mitchell, I, I, I love the kid, but he's not a shooter. This is a perfect segue to the other big question that many have, and that's what's going to happen with Jeremy Roach, because we saw Hubert Davis have a difficult conversation a year ago with a guy who hit an iconic shot, who was beloved by many, because of that, and was the leading scorer of the team for a team that underachieved. He moved on. It was best for Caleb Love. Now, I don't want to equate Caleb Love to Jeremy Roach here, but when you are projected to be the best team in college basketball going into next year, and all the way-too-soon rankings have Duke at the very top at the moment, can you Which, do better at point guard than Jeremy Roach through the we, portal? Can we revisit after this? Can we revisit how stupid the way too early rankings are? Yeah. Like they were stupid before. Now, when you've got like 800 talented players in the portal without destinations, it's even dumber. It's the dumbest thing we it, do. It's really, really dumb. But with Jeremy Roach, can is John Shire, who brought in zero transfers? This past season, looking at it as if I want to take this team to the next level, can I do better with my two guard or point guard in that spot than he is? If we're assuming Caleb Love or Caleb Foster is to return as a shooting guard. Yeah, I look, I think Caleb Foster is returning and I think Caleb Foster is a point guard. I think I think Duke either gets one of two back between Jeremy Roach and Tyrese Proctor. You I, think there's a chance Proctor's back? Yes. Wow. Yes. I 
honestly would put more money on Proctor coming back than Roach at this point. I have thought Jeremy Roach was going to be gone after his sophomore year when it was a when it was uh, the the lane was there for it to be a clean break from Coach K to Shire. Then I thought last year going through learning an entire new freshman class again, um, the ups and downs of his season last year, I thought it was going to be it. Here's what makes me incredulous about it. I don't think Jeremy Roach gets drafted this year in a bad draft. So I don't know where he goes and you have the chance to play on a really good team like he does. When I talk to NBA scouts about guys on this Duke team, there are some who think that Tyrese Proctor is the best prospect on the team, even more than McCain or Filipowski. And I think, especially in this year's draft, you're probably going to be a first round draft pick if you're Tyrese Proctor. Yeah, I, I don't I don't see that. I think his his offensive game is too raw. Um he did not show enough consistency going 0 for 9 when it mattered the most in the Elite Eight. Mm-hmm. It's just, it's tough to get past that. Um, the Let, first, let's the go first through. game against Carolina, he had an 0 for. Yeah, let's go. Th- let's start with assumptions then, because that would have been a wrong assumption that Tyrese Proctor is gone in your mind. Kyle Filipowski's gone. Yes. Jared McCain's gone. Like 98% sure he will enter. And then, you know. One of those, is he going to, like Trevor Keels? If he gets poor feedback, then you then you hold a spot open for him. It could um, be like Trevor Keels, perhaps. Where yeah, yeah, maybe. You just don't know until the last moment. Caleb yeah. Foster, back. I think he's back. Okay. Roach, question mark. Tyrese Proctor, question mark. How active is John Shire going to be in the meantime? How active can he be with roster spots in the portal this year? Yeah, I think he's... I think they're certainly going to be more active than they were last year. And I know that the the immediate answer to that is, well, it's hard to be more active. When you don't bring in a transfer. Right. Uh, they were active last year. They just didn't get one. Um, no, I, I think they have more spots to play with. I Kristen Reeves entering. Christian the Reeves is gone. Mark Mitchell has gone. Um, scholarships come off the books with Spencer Hubbard and Ryan Young. Filipowski. Leaving. Filipowski leaving. You think Jared McCain is leaving. I think one of the two between Roach and Proctor. So you start looking at it as, you know, I, this is kind of new information for me, but I think you might be looking at Cooper Flag play the three next year instead of playing the four, which is why you see Duke looking at possible forward center types like the Drexel kid. I think his name is Amari Williams mm-hmm. who entered the portal yesterday. Um, I, I think you'll see them bring in another big man and I don't know if they would say no to a guard. I mean, you, you can't help but look at what UConn did with experienced grown men guards and look at what they did to Braden Smith and Fletcher lawyer last night. 